Good day, friends. Well, I think I've now mastered sufficient of the technology to try making up a little video presentation of a reflection on scripture myself this morning. So with your permission, I bring that to you. But before we turn to God's word, let us turn to God in prayer. Lord God, you are our saviour and king, our master and friend, our shepherd and guide. Wherever we go, you are with us. Wherever we stray, you seek us out. Whenever we call, you hear us. You are our promise and our hope, our place of rest and peace, our security and our sureness. Whoever we are, you accept us. Whatever we do, you love us. Whenever we fall, you lift us up. Lord God, we worship today in different places. We have different lives. We are in different situations, with different concerns and different dreams. Yet we come before you as one, a people of shared faith in a God who shared all. And so we praise you, Lord God, that you have risen from the dead to fulfil your promise to all creation. We praise you that you have gifted us your spirit as a companion and guide. We praise you that you have chosen us as your people to build your kingdom here on earth. And yet, that is a task we so often fail at in so many ways. We ask your forgiveness. So, Father, as we turn to your word today, open our eyes. Open our eyes in order that, as well as hearing, we may see and learn and do your will. In Jesus' name, we ask this. Amen. Well, I would like us to take two short readings from God's Word today, one reading from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. So first of all, a very well-known passage from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from the New Testament, from John's Gospel, chapter 10. The first ten verses, and this is Jesus speaking. I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, 
I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Amen. And may God bless to us these readings from his word. Since lockdown, a flock of sheep has been placed in the Sidlaw field opposite our house. One good thing about living in the country is that during lockdown, we have easily accessible country walks and we've enjoyed watching the young lambs grow throughout April. At first, they were so small, white and fluffy and so delicate. Already they're growing sturdier and chunkier and quite broad shouldered, some of the lambs beginning to behave like little thugs. I've taken a few photographs of the sheep with their lambs, but I've learned that it is actually quite a difficult thing to do. All my pictures are of sheep and lambs walking away from me. And the reason for that is that sheep are extremely weary of strangers. Even with a fence separating us, as soon as they are approached, the sheep bleat loudly to summon their lambs and scurry off to the other side of the field. Which is the point that Jesus makes in John's Gospel account. It is only the shepherd whose voice the sheep will listen to. It is only the shepherd that the sheep will follow recognising his voice. But, says Jesus in verse 5 of John 10, they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognise a stranger's voice. Jesus is using this word picture to illustrate an important message. Although the message was not understood at the time by the people he was addressing. He was leading up to one of his important I am sayings that are recorded for us in John's Gospel. He talked about being the gate, but he was also leading up to his message that I am the good shepherd. The shepherd whose voice is recognised by his sheep who will flock to him. The shepherd who so looks after his sheep that he lays down his own life for them. Surely a sit up and hear this moment for the listeners. Because although biblical shepherds would take care of their flocks and would be prepared to defend them from prowling predators, no shepherd in biblical times would go so far as to lay down his life for his sheep. This was a what have we here moment for his hearers. Just who is this man who speaks? And only after the events of that first Easter would these words become so much more meaningful. Jesus' words would of course remind his hearers of Psalm 23 in the Old Testament that wonderful hymnal confession of David in the Old Testament that the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord who ensures that he lacks nothing that he needs, provides green pastures beside quiet waters. The good shepherd who defends his sheep. The rod and the staff are not for beating the sheep with, they are for aiding and protecting the sheep. I mentioned some time ago at St James that I'd been fascinated to discover quite recently what the rod was that is mentioned in the psalm. 
not a rod of punishment, as so many people think, but a kind of club with sharps embedded at the end, with which the shepherd would be prepared to beat the brains out of any wild animal that threatened his flock. One who is powerful to save. So we see the shepherd who protects and guides through the difficult times. Could these be times of lockdown? Could these be times when the danger facing us is not so much animal predators, but an unseen microscopic virus? I'm reminded of a Disney cartoon movie from the 60s, very loosely based on King Arthur and Merlin and the medieval knights of the round table. It was called The Sword in the Stone. It was a lot of nonsense, really, but great fun for children and adults too. The most exciting and colourful part of the movie was when the wizard Merlin and an eccentric evil witch called Madame Min have a wizard's duel when they each use magic spells to transform themselves into progressively more fierce and dangerous creatures in a battle to the death. There are a sort of Queensbury rules for such a wizard's contest. The most important one being that, ironically, no mythical creatures, especially dragons, are allowed. But eventually Madame Mim, when cornered, cheats and does indeed turn herself into a dragon, thinking she has the upper hand over Merlin. But Merlin wins the contest by transforming himself into, wait for it, a virus, infecting the dragon-like Madame Mim and winning the duel outright. The sword and the stone shows us, therefore, that knowledge can triumph over might. So, we hope and pray that as legions of doctors and scientists around the world compete to find treatments and vaccines that will be effective against COVID-19, eventually effective forms of treatment and ultimately vaccines will be found. But the Bible gives us more immediate reassurance. It points us to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who calls us by name, who leads us through the difficult and dangerous places. Yes, even through the valley of the shadow of death, where we need fear no evil. For this Good Shepherd is with us to trust every step of the way. So, pray for all the people who are putting their lives on the line to help us through this worldwide crisis. Do your bit to keep them safe. And pray for the clever people who understand the science and are pulling out all the stops to win this medical battle. But even more important, Put your hand in the hand of Jesus Christ. Let him be the centre of your life at this and at all times and put your trust in him. That is how David was able to declare, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And may God bless to us this meditation on his word. And now shall we close with another prayer. Lord, you are our shepherd. We thank you that you give us everything we need, that you offer us rest and refreshment through your word that you keep us on the straight and narrow when we are prone to stray. We thank you that those times when we are afraid, we can trust that you watch out for us. 
We pray again to day for all who work in so many different ways to protect us and to bring healing to those impacted by the COVID-19 virus. Bless all the workers in health services and care homes who work tirelessly in the most difficult of circumstances. Bring honour and success to the scientific researchers who seek out treatments and vaccines. Grant wisdom to the leaders of the world's nations as they respond on behalf of their own peoples to this new global focus. Gracious God, our path in life does not always lead us into quiet, calm places of caring and compassion for others. Our journey often takes us off the beaten track and into the difficult terrain of selfishness and anger. Our progress is often slowed by fear and anxiety. Yet you remain at our side, Lord, to comfort and provide, reminding us of your promise that all is forgiven for all time. And so we praise you, Lord, that you bless us anew each day with your grace and goodness, that you call us by name, that you open doors to fresh opportunities, and that you lead us by the hand to a place we can call home. Take us from here, refreshed in our journey with you and with one another, that we might love you more and follow you more closely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And a blessing. You are sought. Seek peace. You are loved. Love justice. You are protected. Protect the weak. You are safe. Save the lost. You are chosen choose life. And now may God bless each one of us through the week ahead. Amen.